Thanks to the supporters of channel member Michael McCloskey. Thank you very much for your kind words, Mrs. Wimmer. You're absolutely right. I did become Kevy four times this weekend, just gone winning the streamer showdown for the fourth time out of five in season six. It was, a, I, yeah, I had a lovely time. Um, thank you for watching as well. Thank you to everyone else who watched. Now we just need to, now we just to make, need to make it five out of six next time around, don't we? Hello and welcome to part 81 of the Greek Odyssey. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have both legs of our Champions League first knockout round tie against Atletico Madrid. What is the point in topping your group when you get drawn against Atletico Madrid as your reward for doing it? Uh, since you were last with me, though, lots of things have happened, not least of which I won the Streamer Showdown again. I mentioned it in the intro. If you don't watch anything on Twitch, if you don't know what the Streamer Showdown is, it's basically a competition between nine different football manager streamers over on Twitch. We all play each other over the course of a weekend, and then I get declared the winner on Sunday night. That's usually how it goes. It went that way again this weekend. It's the fourth time out of six seasons I've won, and I didn't play in one of the seasons either. So, Kevy four times has got a pretty decent record in the streamer showdown. If you are interested in checking it out, if you head over to my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Lelujo, there's loads of clips and VODs and stuff from the weekend over there. And of course, make sure you're following over there. So when we get round to the next season, you get notifications when I go live and you know that you can then watch and get involved as I go and try and become the five time champion. But there's also been stuff that's been going on in this save. As you can see, we've continued to win lots of football matches. We have lost our long, long, long consecutive winning streak, though. We have a 1-1 draw at home against Olympiacos in the league. We're still undefeated, but the winning streak is gone, and it's very sad. This is what the league table looks like. 24 games gone, 70 points on the board. We're 18 points clear already. And look how far Olympiacos have fallen off the pace. Olympiacos, 26 points behind us after 24 games, is just ridiculous there have been some transfers that have gone on as well and um, we finally moved david marola on from the club he's gone back to italy uh, signed for napoli for 13 million pounds yes we've taken a little bit of a loss on him but we were paying him um, i think over eighty thousand pounds a week to not play for us um, he actually only started five games this year only 14 games of the year before so in a year and a half he started 19 games for us eighty thousand pounds a week is a lot of money for a reserve slash fringe slash rotation player so yes we've eaten a little bit of a loss but i think we we've we've cut our losses long term by shipping him off now so he's gone back to italy um lorenzo parola's also left the club we knew that one was coming that was arranged back in september um he's gone to aston villa playing in the premier league regularly so i think the moves like this do show a little bit of context for just how good this apollon side is that our fringe players are going into top tier sides in major leagues and okay they're going to teams let me rephrase that going to teams in the major leagues i'm sorry villa fans but i accidentally called you top tier and had to correct myself before i got abused in the comments uh but he's playing regularly in the premier league so we're, we're a good team he's a good player but parola and marola were of course the two who didn't make it into our champions league squad because of the silly rules that meant we weren't allowed to play either of them. We've also sent a couple of players out on loan. Two that you probably wouldn't expect to leave the club on loan, uh, but they just wanted game time, so it doesn't hurt. Marcus Acosta has gone on loan to River for the season, so gone back to River Plate, where we stole him from initially. And uh, as you can see, he's gone straight in scoring goals. He's only on loan until the end of the season, but they've agreed to pay all of his £54,000 a week wages, and they're just taking him on a six-month loan. And I don't think it will do him any harm at all to go back to the place where he made his name and remake his name, go there, score a whole load of goals in Argentina. And then in the summer, we can make a decision with Marcus Acosta. Are we going to make him one of our five EU players that play regularly? Or are we going to sell him at a profit? And either way, I think we've, we've got, we're going to have either of those options available to us in the summer. Um, and we've also let Osman Callender go out on loan. He's gone to Leipzig until the end of the season again they've agreed to pay all of his wages and um, he's on even more money i mean we're getting rid of some of the expensive fringe players Ninety-seven thousand pounds a week for our backup goalkeeper i'm not proud of myself but at least i'm dealing with it and um, they're paying his wages 
until the end of the season. And then again, we're going to have to make a decision between him and Tomessi. It's going to be Tomessi. He's our goalkeeper. Um, so we probably need to move Calendar on in the summer because he's just earning far too much money. We did bring in one player as well. We've just gone and raided Olympiacos again. Um, this is our new thing. We go and raid Olympiacos every now and again. But with Calendar leaving, um, it made sense for us to bring in another goalkeeper. We looked at this guy a few years ago, Kostas Solakis. Um, is Greece's current goalkeeper. 29 caps for Greece at 25 years old. Um, he was in the media dream 11 until Tomesi emerged. And with Tomesi off playing Olympic qualifiers this month and Osman leaving, uh, we needed an actual senior goalkeeper to come in. So Salakis is Greek. He's homegrown in Greece. So he helps with the Champions League squad re um, quali uh, re uh, registration. Helps with that. Helps with getting Greek players in the team. And he's not been disastrous either. So plus it weakens Olympiakos. And that always makes me chuckle a little bit as well. I know it's not really in the spirit of the save, but it does make me chuckle when we weaken Olympiakos and strengthen ourselves. Um, so they that is all the transfer news, all of the all of the league news. And now we just need to uh, try and deal with Atletico Madrid. They currently find themselves third in La Liga. Um, they are not a million miles off the pace either. If we have a look at um, their form over the last few years. I mean, they, have, they haven't they have been a top three team in Spain since the 2020-21 season, and it's now 2028. So it's been a good six or seven... I guess they were there. But it's been a good six or seven years since Atletico have actually been any good. But it looks like they are having a little bit of a resurgence this year. Hopefully we don't catch them at a bad time. We've got to go and play. We've got to go and get it done. Let's talk more football, Kev. Let's go play Atletico. This is the team we're going to put out there to do it. Tanesi is back now from his international duty that he's on, he was on, so he can just come straight back into the side with Salakis dropping down to the bench. And this is our team. We've got Tanesi in goal, a back four of Pezic, Michaelis, Criado and Felipao, Milo at the base of the midfield, Duffy and Cordoba ahead of him, and then German and Fernandez supporting Carnavali up front. We uh, we have a little bit of a, a wide man issue. Um, Sanchez is injured um, where is Lencina? Why is he not in that team? I picked this team a few days. Oh, Lencina is on holiday because he came, he was another one who was away for all throughout all of January doing Olympic qualifiers. I assume that's what it was. There was a load of players got called up to the Argentina under 23s. Lencina was with them and he came back absolutely shattered. So we had to send him on holiday. So it's our backup wide players. With the changes we've done to the squad, we have been able to add German to the Champions League squad now. So at least we've got someone to play in that position. But it's um, it's not exactly our full strength team. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be interesting. And we don't have a huge strength coming off the uh, the bench. If we if we lose Carnavali, it's going to be Savidis who comes on as the only other striker um, in the squad because Van Wuri um, is uh, he's not registered in our Champions League squad. I don't think. There must be a reason past Kev hasn't put him on the bench. And I'm pretty sure it's because he's not registered in the Champions League squad. But I can double check that. But I mean, Savidis is a young Greek player. If we're going to try young Greek players, we might as well try them against Atletico Madrid. Maybe I should have kept Acosta, but he was just getting frustrated at not getting to uh, at not getting to play any league football. As much as we're not bothered about the league anymore, and we, we could put the reserves out in the league and win it. These players want to be able to play in it regularly. Acosta needs it for his development. And I think I do think it will do him the world of good to go back to Argentina for six months, bang in a whole load of goals, and then force me into making a decision about him in the summer. He either becomes one of the five, and presumably we sell Lencina in the summer, um, and work out how to get our eight non-EU players down to five. and Or, or he comes back with a value of 20 or 30 million pounds, and we sell him on for big money and use that to reinvest in the squad. Either way, it seems win-win as long as he goes back there and is successful. And you saw that he's on three goals from two games already. But talking of success, Domenico Carnavali has just opened the scoring for us away at Atletico Madrid. It's Atletico nil, Apollon one. And that is not something I was necessarily expecting to be saying during this first leg. We're here with a weakened team. But goodness me, we've opened the scoring and that is wonderful stuff. I mean, there's lots of reasons for Apollon fans to be happy at the moment. As I record this, the news has just broken in the last 24 hours or so that Apollon have actually made it back into the top flight in Greece in real life. 
we were a playoff win that included Fat John in the starting eleven in the playoff game against Xanthi. So it is. Uh, it's. I mean, everything's looking positive at Apollon. I'm hoping with them being in the Greek top flight, it might be a little bit easier to get hold of an Apollon replica shirt this coming season. That's uh, that would be awesome, not just for me, but I imagine there's a few of you who'd like to pick up an Apollon shirt as well. And I still haven't been able to find a genuine, uh, like current one. There's a few. There's a few older ones knocking around on eBay and the classic football shirts websites, but. I want uh, I want a current one in big fat man sizes, and I'd quite like to be able to get a name and number. And I know you can you don't necessarily have to get that as you buy it. You can get that done at like sports shops and stuff. But I want to I want it I want it done properly and hoping with them being in the top tier, I'll be able to. Not that it's been particularly easy to find a Chivas shirt either for that series. So this is this is the one problem we're doing this little bit of a world tour we're doing here at the tail end of FM twenty. It's hard to find the shirts. I've got all my lovely shirts behind me. My my Bourne shirts, my home shirts, Nuneaton and Kings Lynn and even a South End shirt up there. But I can't find shirts for any of these teams that I'm falling in love with now. And Apollon certainly are going to be a club that I always have a soft spot for from now on. And I do. As soon as this whole nonsense going on in the world at the moment is over with, I need to get over to Greece fly into Athens and catch an Apollon Smyrna's game. If I if I could get oh imagine if I could get to Apollon versus Olympiakos in in the league next season it would be amazing. I need the stars to align to make that happen. Carnavali's got the ball in the back of the net again, but it is offside. I mean he was well offside as well. Uh, putting us 2-0 up would have been absurd. I mean, I talk about having to sell... Look how far off he is. I talk about having to sell Lencina in the summer, but someone like Carnavali is someone who, if he continues to get better and continues to perform in the Champions League and perform internationally for Italy, he is a he is a starting player for the Italy national team now. If he continues in this vein of form, how much longer are we going to be able to keep him tied up in the Greek leagues before he says... Kev, I want to go and play in a big league for a big club because as much as we're starting to look competitive in the Champions League, it takes so long for club reputation to catch up with Champions League performances. In a game like this, I think Atletico have got a four and a half star reputation. We're on a three and a half star reputation. So the game is convinced we're coming here to get an absolute paste in and it will tell it will talk about underdog victories and all that kind of stuff if we manage to overturn Atletico, even though we performed better in the group stages. And someone like Carnavali, if he if he got an offer to go to somewhere like Atletico, he's going to want to go because they're a much bigger reputation club in a much bigger reputation league, even though logically, based on how the footballing world is in 2027, 2028, um, logically, it looks like he's actually got a better chance of winning major silverware with us. It's not how the game will see it. Right, we're bringing Pepe on on the left-hand side. Fernandez. He's also having a terrible game, so we're going to bring Savidis on for him, stick Carnavali out onto the right. As I as I keep pushing him as a winger, I will make that boy a winger, um, and then Savidis wants to be a target man, but he ain't going to be a target man. I mean, we said this when he signed, we weren't going to let him be a target man. He's just going to have to, he's just going to, have to play as an advanced forward. It's like Luris all over again. This is the problem with Greek strikers. You get them, and they look like they've got some decent potential. They look like they're going to be any good. But then they don't actually work in the way I play football manager. I need my I need my quick advanced forwards for my system to work. I'm not going to rebuild a tactic just around someone who, uh, let's face it, I'm not going to play a huge amount once I get my Argentinian contingent back from their loans. Um, Dominguez has come on at the base of the midfield for my final change. I'm actually thinking I probably should have dropped Cordoba back into that role and played Dominguez a little bit further forward because Dominguez is uh, has got a little bit more creative attacking spark than uh, than maybe Cordoba has. Although, playing is, uh, playing at the base of the midfield, he might drop himself into a little quarterback role, which will be quite pleasant. Although, he's on a defensive midfielder instruction, so he's probably not going to start playing like Vermonti because we've not told him to. Um, we, are, we are under a bit of pressure here from Atletico, and that's a very good save from Tennessee. I mean, the stats really do tell quite an accurate story of this tie so far. And... Atletico are going to be a little bit miffed that they're still behind in the tie because I think that's been disallowed. It has. For us to be 1-0 up after only 37% possession, three shots on target all game long. We've not created a good chance in the entire game. 
Atletico are sat there looking at us, wondering what on earth is happening. And we're just having a lovely time. Dominguez, some lovely football from him on the edge of the area. Duffy, out to Pezic, who's got acres of space to play in here. Plays it infield to Pepe. Pepe to Duffy. Duffy slots it into Pepe. Pepe with a shot, but it's not a very good one. And we have brought on a couple of our young Spanish players, or probably our only two young Spanish players in Pepe and Dominguez. And uh, they did. They were both involved in that move, but Pepe needs to do a little bit better with applying the finish there. And Dominguez clears from the corner in what was hopefully the final highlight of the game. Although Atletico do have a last second chance, and it's another fantastic save from Tennessee. It doesn't matter because it was offside anyway. Uh, but goodness me, have we got a good goalkeeper? And he has. He's won us that first leg there. I think. And uh, just the excellent, excellent performance from Tennessee. He's just, I mean, he's a goalkeeper. He's just finished on a 7.4. Um, only Carnavali with a better performance. And that's basically because he got a goal and that gives you like a 1.5 boost on your on your rating. But that is a good result. We're now going to play a couple more of these league games before coming back for the return fixture, where hopefully we can book a spot in the quarterfinals of the Champions League for the second year in a row. Well, we have finally lost a game, boys and girls. It was against Olympiakos in the first leg of the semi-final of the Greek Cup. And it was a very heavily rotated team, as you can see. And it was close. But we have lost 4-3 at home to Olympiakos. Other than that, we are still cruising along nicely in the league. This is what the league table now looks like after a couple more victories. And this is the team we're putting out there for the home leg against Atletico. It's Tennessee in goal. A back four of Pezic, Michaelis, Criado. And Felipao Milo at the base of the midfield. Duffy and Cordoba ahead of him. And then a front three of Sanchez, Carnavali and Lencina. So both Lencina and Sanchez back for this second leg. Although Sanchez is a long way away from match fit. He has had a fitness test. In fact, fitness test not required. Um, he just doesn't have much in the way of match sharpness. German, of course, is down on the bench. And German, German has really benefited from the little... In fact, both German and Fernandez have really benefited from the run of games where Sanchez and Lencina were unavailable because um, they've they've both played a lot of football and they've both played really well. Um, you saw, even in that Olympia, Olympiacos game that we just lost, German picking up a couple of goals in that game. Fernandez has now played enough football that he no longer wants to leave the club. He wanted out because he wasn't getting any football time. One of the main motivations behind selling Marola. And hopefully now we'll be able to tie... Fernandez down to a new contract because he is, we've seen, even in videos, we've seen flashes of brilliance from Fernandez, and hopefully he will uh, he will go on to become an important part of the team long term. Now we can hopefully tie him down to a longer term deal. Uh, 22 minutes on the clock. Nothing really has happened in this first half so far. Obviously, we do have the lead and the away goal from the first leg, so we're pretty happy with a pretty quiet match. As long as we can keep Atletico at bay... We'll be happy. Lencina with the in-swinging free kick. He's looking for Duffy. Duffy is not really the man that I would want on the end of a free kick. Michaelis was there too, but it wasn't really aimed at Michaelis. Pezic has got the ball back here, though, releasing Sanchez on the left. Sanchez goes past his man. In fact, he doesn't, but the clearance only goes as far as Felipe. It's Duffy now. Lovely little pass into Pezic. Back to Milo. Duffy again. Pezic. Lovely pass to Felipe, who's in space. Goes past his man. Cordoba with the shot, and it goes wide. For a corner, and hopefully this is going to be a, a chance for a breakthrough for us. It's Sanchez who's going to hit the in-swinger and doesn't manage to find the man at the near post, although Duffy has won the ball back nicely for us here and is looking to pick his pass, but ends up playing it all the way back to our defender who was covering there. And uh, at least we weren't hit with a counter-attack. I guess that's the important thing. And We're now very close to half-time and hopefully not about to consider... This would be the worst time in the entire tie for us to concede a goal. Um, but Atletico have got a man over on this left-hand side. And this is a worrying development. And Pezic has given away a penalty. And I said it would be the worst time for us to concede. And now we need a big save from Tennessee. And we don't get one. And we have conceded at the worst time to concede. And I really don't want our European run to end here again. It's 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 so frustrating. We're so we're so dominant in the league, but we are still quite a long way away from winning this Champions League. I think. Um, let's 
No, I don't want to be aggressive. Let's be assertive. Not happy with the performance. We do need to turn up in this second half. Across both legs, we've struggled to get the ball. We've struggled to really create anything. We are better than this. We showed in the group stages. We beat Bayern Munich twice. We beat Ajax twice. I would say Bayern Munich, unless unless La Liga has shot way beyond Bundesliga in terms of quality over the last 10 seasons, I would say Bayern Munich have got to be a better team than Atletico Madrid. But the scoreline doesn't suggest that. Oh, that's a lovely effort from Lencina. That's probably our best chance of the uh, of the entire of the entire uh, two legged affair so far. There's a there's a football word for that, and I don't know what it is. My brain's not working, but it was not to be. Um, right, Sanchez is shattered. We're going to bring German on for him, and we're looking down at that bench and maybe slightly regretting letting Acosta go out on loan. Dominguez is going to come on as well, and we are going to ask for ten minutes of passion. There's got to be a goal in this somewhere. We're going to go attacking as well, and we are going to try and win this match. Milo, with the uh, with the free kick forward, causes a little bit of panic in the area, but not enough to lead to a goal. And it's back with Dominguez again. That's a lovely pass for Lencina. If he can just get a hold of it, Lencina does keep it in. Cross from Lencina. German is there, but it's just over from German. And that felt like that might have been the chance. It was such a good pass to release Lencina, but he couldn't quite get it under control quickly enough. And now... I'm looking again and thinking, game changers on the bench. The only one really is Fernandez. So we're going to have Fernandez on for Lencina just for some extra energy on that right hand side. But it is Atletico who are camped out on the edge of our area with 10 minutes to go and we've given away a really sloppy three kick. And I think that's a second yellow card for Pezic, who has had a nightmare today, really. He's given away a penalty and now he's got himself sent off. And once again, in a big game. We have had a red card. It is the story of this save. And it's so frustrating. We don't have anyone who can cover at left back. I'm not even going to bring a left back on. In fact, what am I saying? We're not we're not behind in this tie yet, and we've got a substitution still to use. Let's let's not lose our heads, Kev. Come on now. Let's let's just engage back in with the process again for a minute. We're going to take off Cordoba. And we're going to bring on Hernandez. Uh, no, we're going to bring on Kansarovic, who actually is a left back. The uh, Fernandez substitution hasn't gone through. So we can do that and actually maintain a back four. It has weakened the midfield an awful lot. A lot of pressure now on Dominguez as the only midfield that we've got. But it's make or break for Dominguez. We spent a lot of money on him. And there's been a few murmurs in the comments section that he might not have been a successful signing. I still think he's going to go on to become a superb player. And there's a goal from kind of Oh, it's offside. Ah! And now, right at the other end, we don't even get a replay. And it's a free kick from Atletico, but luckily goes just wide. I really thought that was the goal that was going to get us through to the next round from Carnavali, but no. Right, do we get to make another change now? I'm not happy with the performance out there. I don't know if we now get to make that Fernandez change. We do. So Fernandez now on for Lencina and we are going to we're going to push forward again. We're still on an attacking mentality. We want to win this game. We don't want the lottery of penalties. We want to win this football match <laughs> even though there's only 10 of us. We'll be fine. Half time and extra time we're going to demand more and Hope that this is where the goal is coming from. We are ahead for clear-cut chances for the game. We've been better in this home fixture than we were in the away one. There's German, but it's straight at their goalkeeper. And that is another big chance for us that's gone begging. And Atletico looking to get started with an immediate counter-attack. And of course, this is where them having the men over is going to be an advantage because we've only really got that little two-man midfield with Milo sitting very deep. And Tanesi does well to keep hold of the shot from the Atletico forward. And it's Fernandez now crossing over. I don't know how this move has started because it's picked up in action halfway through. Milo all the way back to Criado, who is on loan, of course, from Real Madrid. So he's got extra incentive there to try and knock Atletico out of Europe because he'll be a hero back at his parent club. Michaelis back to Tanesi again. Tanesi to Criado. Milo, Criado again, ball over the top for Carnavali to chase. This is the chance for Domenico Carnavali, and it's just wide. Oh, that was, 
He's had some chances to win us this game. Three clear-cut chances to their one now, and that did feel like that might be our final opportunity. And I guess we just got to hope that Atletico don't score and we can roll the dice on penalties because surely there's not going to be another chance like the one Carnavali has just missed. He did so well until the finish, to quote the in-game commentary. Kansarovic, though, charging forward on another counter-attack. He's got a little bit in the way of options, but... Not as much as you would want. Carnavali was too close to him. Fernandez had a man blocking his run. Um, Kansarovic had to go on his own, and it was a poor effort. But it is us on the attack again. It's Felipao. He's gone past his man. He's released Fernandez. Fernandez. Can he? Oh. He's. I, I think he's gone for a shot when he should have gone for a pass. Milo, that's a terrible pass. But Criado has got him out of trouble there. Um, but as a team, we are still not back in possession and it's a worry that with five minutes to go this highlight continues but Michaelis wins the ball back it's Dominguez to German German goes past his man beautiful pass for Carnavali and it's another chance for Carnavali four clear-cut chances now in this game we've only got ourselves to blame if we get knocked out tonight because we have had all the opportunities to win this tie and we're just not capitalising on them. Atletico, another effort from range, and Tennessee deals with it comfortably again. And now it's German. Three minutes left. German has a free kick. German floats it in. Oh, it's very, very close. Michaelis has been given offside. So even if that sneaks in, it's not given anyway. And now Atletico with a free kick, and that is a hideous way to go out of the Champions League. It's just filthy. Absolute filth. Oh, God. That's awful. We don't deserve this. This is an absolute hammer blow that we do not deserve at all. Because we've played so well. There's a minute left. Have we got an equaliser in us? Fernandez. I mean, even an equaliser is not enough because of away goals. Fernandez. I mean, it's a very good effort from him, but it's all for nothing now. Because we've got to score twice in 40 seconds. And I suggest we're probably not going to. German with the free kick. Carnavali is there. Criado tucks it away. But even that's been given offside. The amount of time... Oh, no, it hasn't been given offside. But surely away goals are a thing. Although there's no away goal indicator on here. Have we given ourselves a way out of this? I don't think... I think we're still out. We are still out. Ah, oh, so frustrating. So frustrating. Because we... We weren't really with it in the first leg, but we won it. As that tie went on, we got better and better, and we and we deserve to win. And we haven't done. And uh, not only is it huge disappointment, but also huge financial implications, because you make so much money for each round you go through at this stage. So our financial projection is now indicating that, once again, despite massively low... We've taken our wage budget down from a million pounds a week to... Three quarters of a million. So we've we've lowered the wage expenditure by 25%. But even with that being done, without a Champions League run, we're still not going to get much in the way of money this summer, I don't think. So we're kind of stuck in this situation where we need a couple more players to push us to the next level. But the only way we can get them is by selling. And that just leaves us where we were to begin with. We need some youngsters to really push through. And I guess that is the one positive that we can take from that game. Because if we look at the players who were involved in that game and compare them to the uh, the team from last year, the players who are really putting in the performances there and really pushing, really pushing Atletico close. German, I know he's only got a six point two, but German, Fernandez, Dominguez, Carnavali, these are all very young players who are hopefully only going to get better. If we can keep this team together and obviously add Sanchez and Lencina fully fit back into the mix, add Acosta back into the mix, maybe pop, just fill in a few little gaps here and there, pop a few extra players in, have a couple of decent players come through the youth system. You never know. But that was disappointing. Right. We will we will revisit one more time this season and we'll be back. Well, potentially too. We might win the Greek Cup as well yet, but we'll definitely be back tomorrow for the game where we win the league because presumably the league is won now but whenever we get to the point where we've won the league which I think is only a game or two away looking at the fact we've already qualified for the Champions League so how far we're what 20 
24 points clear with 10 games to go. So we're potentially a couple of matches away from winning the league. So if we can tie that in with the second leg of the Greek Cup, we might just artificially do that anyway and show you like the two Olympiakos games and just try and do a domestic double again, I guess, as a as a way to make ourselves feel better for yet another Champions League failure. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.